Lord has given me a, a message on the power of praise. <laughs> the power of praise. And I'm coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, starting in verse 3. Isaiah 61, starting in verse 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank God for our worship team. Yeah. Yeah. You know, worship sets the atmosphere and the tone. It invites the Holy Spirit yeah. in. Anointed worship can cause every distraction to flee, every oppression to flee, every depression to flee. It can cause chains to break. Yeah. Worship causes us worship and praise. What I'm going to talk about this morning causes us to focus our hearts and our minds on Jesus. Right. We've got enough going on. Okay, we got enough going on driving to church this morning. Come on. Let alone what has happened for the rest of the week or the rest of the year or the rest of the last two years of our lives. Praise causes us to focus. On the only one that can fix it. Amen. And I had that song rolling all over my spirit this morning. Jesus is going to fix it. Amen. After a while, Jesus is going to fix it. If we hold on, Jesus yes. is going to fix it. See, sometimes we just need to get up and start praising him. Because he's worthy to be praised. Yes. And praise positions us for the power of God to move in and through our lives. Amen. Let me say that again this That's morning. Yes. Praise will position you to receive power yes. that God wants to move in and through your life. Praise God. Hallelujah. Truth. Hallelujah. You know what? I get excited. I was teaching the kids. They're so smart. Y'all kids are so smart. I just want to let you know. Yeah, move, move with me, Chaudhary. Move with me. <laughs> I'm moving this camera, morning. Girl. Hallelujah. Praise. We were teaching the kids this morning. What the angels of the Lord and the elders are doing around the throne of God. And they're crying out, holy, yeah. holy, holy is the Lord God almighty who was and is and is to come. Yeah. And the word of God says that they do that day and night. Hallelujah. Day and night. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. Oh Ask your children. They'll tell you. Yeah. Ask them what do they do around the throne. And they'll tell you. They're learning. And I was like, how much more now should we be doing that? Yeah. Right. Should we be crying out to the Lord here on earth? He wants to make his kingdom on heaven yeah. reflected now on earth. Yes. He wants the power of God from heaven to become down on earth. Yes. He wants the peace of God that is in heaven to come down on earth. Yes. But we need to access it. Amen. See, access has been granted by the blood of Jesus Hallelujah. Christ. You have access. That's true. Let's think about this. You, I told you, you have unending access yes. to a bank account. <laughs> All you got to do is take your debit card yes. and drive on through the drive through yes. put it on in the machine, 777. You just put that in there. And you can take out whatever you want. Yes. That's what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for you. You can come on to the throne of God. He said boldly, yeah. come to the throne of God in time of need. Yes. Anybody in need this morning? Yes. My Lord. I'm, I don't know about you, but I'm in need this morning yes. of his mercy and receive grace. Yes. Grace. We need grace this morning. All you got to do is pull them up. Position yourself through praise and allow the power of God to flow in and through your life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The word of God says this. Isaiah 61, 3. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. Anybody been mourning lately? Mm -hmm. Has anybody been mourning? 
Has this world been mourning lately? To give unto them beauty for ashes. I love Pastor Matt because he somehow always prays or preaches something that I'm going to say. And he prayed this morning about beauty and ashes. He gives on beauty for ashes. The oil of joy for mourning. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I don't know about you, but there's a heaviness in this nation and in the world. And not only that, but in our personal lives and in the church that has come to set in and steal from us what we can receive from the Lord. That's right. And I don't know about you, but I'm done with it. I want to operate in the sphere of the power of God that he has given me. Oh God, bring me back to my first love. Set my eyes on you again. That I can receive the power to walk this walk. To get up in the morning. To go to my job and do what I've been called to do. To be a light to my children. To be a light I don't know about you, but when I pull up to the gas station up of lately, I don't want to be a light. <laughs> I had a guy pull up next to me and honk his horn and just give me the finger, and I had no idea why. I literally none whatsoever. And at first I was highly offended. And then I was like, I'm not gonna react to that. Right, right. Amen. Because right now there is chaos. Yeah. And confusion yes. everywhere. Praise God. Help us. The fields are as white yes. in the world. Yes. It is prime time yes. for the church to rise up yes. and to be the light in the midst of the darkness. Hallelujah. And we better put on our garment of praise yes. for the spirit of heaviness Hallelujah. that has come to rob us from the peace give us from the power that God wants to give us from his presence from his joy there is a heaviness that wants to set in and steal from you yes, sir. and in stealing from you it steals from those around you that you can be a testimony of the glory of God yes thank you you don't think God in his sovereign hand knows what's going on right That's now right. That's right. God either makes it happen or allows it to happen. But when it happens, it tests our faith. Yes. I've been crying out as of lately, God protect my faith. Yes, that's good. That's it. That's good. Guard my faith. Yes. Because if your faith is shaken, then we can't receive what God has for us. Yes, but he wants us to make us trees. Yes. Planted. Yes. Planted. Yes. You better dig your heels in and be stay planted in Christ. Yes, in the name of Jesus. It goes on to say that. That they might be called trees of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. That he might be glorified. And they shall build, listen. They shall build old waste places. We have an obligation as a body of Christ. That they shall build old waste places. That they shall rise up the former desolations. And they shall repair the waste cities and the desolations of many generations. The book of Isaiah at this time was written 700 years before Christ showed up on the scene. 700 years before Christ showed up on the scene. Isaiah was a prophet. A prophet is somebody that is anointed by God, divinely influenced by God to point the people in the right direction and to tell you of things to come. Things to come, but to point you towards righteousness, to point you towards Christ, to point us in the 
right direction. 700 years before Christ showed up, Isaiah was preaching about the one to come. Yes. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty who was and is and is to come. I want to tell you again, Pastor Matt's been preaching on it. He's coming again. Yes. Yes. He has come once and he has, he's coming again. Yes. And he wants us as his people to operate in the power of praise that others would see the glory of God upon lives and desire what we have some of us in this church have been i can look at your faces and each one of you individually i know beyond a shadow of doubt has been through a lot in the last year two years things that have completely rocked our world but you know what i see trees of righteousness yes. I see trees of righteousness. I see people who have decided to plant themselves in Christ and to put on the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness that is taking your ashes and he is going to make it beautiful. He is going to give you joy when you mourn. See, he didn't say you would never mourn. He didn't say you'd never be in ashes. He didn't say that you would never be heavy. He said, but I have the answer. Yeah. I have the answer yeah. to your problem. Yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise. This is what I've come to talk about. Praise will position you to receive power. He shall build. He shall raise up. And he shall repair. He shall build. He shall raise up and he shall repair. What are we building upon? God's word. That's why when I read Psalms 91 this morning, he gave it to me in worship. My God is my refuge. My God is my refuge. Nothing shall come near thy dwelling. See, that's where we should stand. When we build upon the word of God, we will not be shaken at the things around us. The Bible tells us that it will wax worse and it will wax worse. So this is just the beginning of the, the times. So get ready, children of God. But this is prime time for all us to be operating in the power of God. Yes. Amen. I'm preaching to myself. God, help me yes, to hold on to you yes. during these times and to not
makes the blind to see, opens prison doors, and sets the captive free. I got a river of life flowing out of me. If you just begin to sing to the Lord, I'm telling you, it accesses the Spirit of God to begin to encourage you and raise you on up out of that pit you might have been in this morning. Spring up, oh well, within my soul. Spring up. Working. 
even when you can't feel it, he's working. God is on the move this morning, and I'm believing him. And then it says he's going to raise you up, and then it says he shall repair. Yes. See, he's, he's going to build the proper foundation. We build upon the word of God. Then he's going to begin to raise us up by the power of his spirit. And then he's going to repair that which has been broken, and he will make it new. He's going to make it new. Do you need something new this morning? Do you need your mind renewed this morning? Do we need some emotions repaired this morning? Do we need a touch in our body this morning? Do we need to see our family new this morning? Do we need to see our relationship with our children renewed this morning? Do we need a new job this morning? That'd be nice, right? Some of us. God is about to repair. You feel like you've been broken and you walked in those doors this morning and you said, God, I don't know what if I can make it another day. I want you to remember, spring up a well within my soul. Spring up a well and make me whole. Hallelujah. So this chapter begins with Isaiah 61.1. I want you to listen to this. Before he goes on to make beauty out of ashes, and joy out of mourning. This is what the Lord says. Isaiah 61, 1. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Have you been broken in your heart this morning? Yeah. Yeah. To pro proclaim liberty, freedom to the captives. To open the prison doors to them that are bound. This is God's word. Yes. Have you been bound? Do you know someone that is bound? But God said, I'm going to open the prison door. Thank you, Jesus. To proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. And the day of vengeance of our God. To comfort all that mourn. Hallelujah. So he proclaims it. This is the word in Isaiah. I want you to catch this story. Isaiah, 700 years before Jesus' ministry is preaching these words under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is speaking through him. And this is what he says. 700 years later, we see, if you'll go there, Luke 4, 16. Luke 4, 16. Now this is Jesus speaking. Jesus has now been born. Jesus is now speaking in the synagogue. And it says, he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for, to read. And there delivered unto him was a book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he opened the book, he found the place where it was written. And he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that have been bruised, bruised but not broken, <laughs> bruised but not broken, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. I want you to see this. The promise in the Old Testament was pointing to the Messiah, to the Savior that was to come. Yeah, yeah. And then 700 years later, the Messiah, the Savior, shows up on the scene and says, look, this is the acceptable year of the Lord. This is why I have come to heal. It is who have come to heal the brokenhearted, yeah. to set the captive free, to preach deliverance to those that are bound. We are seeing the promise of God fulfilled 700 years later at his first coming. Yeah. Hallelujah. The promise stood true. Yeah. If you have been waiting, keep waiting. Don't quit. The promise is coming. It stood true to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And I looked that up because I was excited. And it says the acceptable year of the Lord 
is the de the year of jubilee. The year of liberty. Listen, I know that we have went through the ringer in the last two years and probably more so. But this is the year. This is a year I'm believing for joy. Yes. In the midst of our circumstances. This is a year I'm believing for freedom. But I need you as the body to believe with me. Amen. Look, we got to lock arms and do this together. Yes. A tactic of the enemy will get you to believe you're alone, you're alone, you're alone, you're alone, you're alone, you're alone, you're alone. Everybody is alone. But you know what? If we lock arms together and believe God for what his word says to be true, there is power in that. There is power in praise. There is power when we come together. When the devil tells you, you know what, just roll over. You can watch it online. Come on. Get up. Yes. yes. And come into the house of God. Yes. So that, and I'm not saying if you can't come to church, I understand. I'm not saying that to anybody <laughs> online. But what I'm saying is there is power yes. when we fellowship and join yes. together and believe God for what his word says to be true. Amen. When I start hearing somebody else praise and I'm over here, that encourages me. That's right. When I see somebody come down to the altar, I'm not like, oh man, what do they need? What do they do? I'm like, get it. Yes. Whatever God has for you, I want to see you get it. Yes. My mom said to me, I'm embarrassed a little bit, but that's okay. My mom said to me, why do I got to keep going to the altar? I said, come on. That means we got to go. Yeah. You know why? Because the enemy would stop you in your seat and That's say, right. you know what? And look, you can receive in your seat. You can receive anywhere you're at. But what the altar is, is a place to say, I need it. Yeah. I'm here. Yeah. And I need what you have for me, yeah. oh God. And I believe in you. I'm here at your altar. I'm believing in the sacrifice. That's right. I'm believing in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm believing you, God. It's a step of faith. Yes. They built altars in the Old Testament to show their faith. Yes. It's faith in action. Yeah. God, I need you to move. Why do we put oil on the sick and pray for them? It's a step of faith. You, God, I believe what your word says to be true. That you can heal. That you can touch. That you can break bondages of darkness. I've seen you do it for me. You can do it for them too. Amen. Do it for me again. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It's a year of freedom. We got free this year. Yes, yes. I'm believing for a year of freedom. I'm believing that we're not going to come in these doors heavy laden any longer. We're going to come in expecting yes. God to move. Thank you, Lord. God move in this place. Yes. Because we can be on the outward, do 
doing and yeah. going through the motions, yes, but on yes. the inward, yes. it could be a chaotic yes. mess. Yes. But he said, cast your cares upon me, for I care for you. Yes. That means come lay them down and don't pick them back up. Yes. Hallelujah. Leave them there. That's so good. And when the enemy wants to come in and oh, tell you, yeah. you need to go, you need to do, you need to fix, you need to do it. No, I left that. Yeah, do it. I left it. You do it, Lord. I, I can't do it. Can't fix it. Every time I go to fix it, I make it more of a mess. Oh, come on. That's right. I make it worse. God, you fix it. Yeah. You do it, Lord. So rest. Year of Jubilee is a time of freedom and rest from all your labors and all your toils, yes. all your cares. Thank you. Not only that, it's a place of reversion. That means that word reversion means to return all property that you were forced to sell through poverty and has not been redeemed was to be reverted in payment to its original owner that was lawfully theirs. So by the blood of Jesus Christ, it's a law. By the blood of Jesus, anything that the enemy has taken from you, it is now yours to get back. Thank you, Lord. So if the enemy has taken from you peace, yes. it is lawfully yes. yours. The you, year jubilee, it is lawfully yours to come. Yes. If the enemy has taken joy for you, from you, yes. it is lawfully yours yes. to proclaim. Yes. If the enemy has taken your health, it is lawfully yours to now claim. If the enemy has taken your mind, it is now lawfully yours. To claim, God clothed me in my right mind. If the enemy has taken your finances, it is lawfully yours to now claim. Okay, we don't we don't believe in you know grab it and grab it and grab it and all that stuff. But we believe the word of God Amen. is true, Amen. and we believe that we can claim life yes. where there has been death, yes. and we believe we can claim restoration where things have been broken down. Yes. You see, the year of Jubilee was a time to revert everything that has been stolen from you and give it back because it is lawfully yours to claim. Mm. When the enemy wants to produce chaos in our lives, we can claim the peace of God again Thank in you. Jesus' name. Yes. When he wants to lie and tell you it's too far gone, you're too far gone, you can say no. Pick up our authority in Christ. Yes, yes. Sometimes we just get trampled underfoot. And the Lord is saying, no, you are a child of God. You are a child of the King. And my name is yours to use. Hallelujah. It's been given to you by the blood of Jesus Christ. We need to pick up our authority. The Lord reminds me of that often because I'll be in a tailspin. And I'm like, man. He'll, and he'll speak soft. He's so sweet. The Lord's yeah. so sweet at times. Oh, yeah. Angela, pick up your authority yes. in my name. Yes. That's good. Yes. I've given you the keys to the kingdom. Yes. Hallelujah. It's yours. Hallelujah. Sometimes we just we'll lose the keys. <laughs> Be looking for them. God has given us the keys. Don't lose heart, Hallelujah. child of God. Hallelujah. I would have lost heart yes. unless I seen the goodness of the Lord yes. in the land of the living. Yes. God wants to reveal his goodness through the power of praise to us. Hallelujah. This year is a year that those who accept Christ shall all go free. This is a year of freedom. This is the acceptable year of the Lord. And what does that year produce? In this season, fruit will be produced. And what will be the fruit? It says, I will preach the gospel to the poor. And he has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. So what will we see? The brokenhearted healed. 
I don't know about you, but I've been through a lot of heartache. And I'm sure you have too. But this year is a year that God is going to heal and mend your heart. He's already done it. God wants to heal and mend the heart. Those that have been shattered by circumstance, shattered by sin, shattered by this world, God wants to heal. He wants to deliver the captives. Forgiveness is yours. You know, sometimes when, when we become a warrior, when we are in a war, we become, when we accept the Lord, we're now in a war. Let me say it that way. But in war, you can become a prisoner of war. In war, you can still become a prisoner of right, war. Right, right. And there is light and there is darkness and there is good and there is evil. And they're constantly warring one against the other. Paul talks about it. There is a war within my members. Yeah. Paul talks about it. But what God is saying here is even though you might have become a prisoner of war as a believer, I'm about to set you free. Freedom is now yours. We can become a prisoner in our own mind. Yes, yes. In your own emotions. Unforgiveness. Jealousy. Yes. Hatred. Yes. Envy. Resentment. Covetousness. Not understanding why this and that has happened. God says, I'm about to set you free. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to deliver every captive. I'm going to recover sight to the blind. That which has been unclear in your life, God is about to give you clarity. Amen. Yes. See, it's been a smoke screen. Maybe we've been in this smoky place. This misty place, unsure, unsettled, not knowing. But God said, I'm going to give you sight. You shall see clearly what I am doing in your life. And I will set at liberty those that have been bruised. That means by the weight of anything that has been bruising you, God is about to set you at liberty. Yes. Hallelujah. The power of praise. The power of praise. Hallelujah. Isaiah 61 3 says, To appoint unto them. That word appoint, I want to say this. That word appoint means I charge, I commit, and I give. I charge you that are in Zion. Zion are those that believe. I charge you and I commit this to you that I am going to give this to my people. To give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he might be glorified. So we're going to see this. Those that are in Zion are the people that believe. But the condition of the people that believed, they were mourning. They were loaded down. Mourn means with grief, sorrow, and deep regret. Sometimes we look at our circumstances or how we're feeling, and as children of God, we're like, why? I shouldn't feel this way. This, these things shouldn't be happening to me. I, anybody ever feel that way? No. I, I'm a child of God. I, I just got saved. I got saved 10 years ago. I've been serving you for 12 years, for 40 years, for 30 years. Why are bad things still happening? Why? And the easiest person to blame at times is God. But we still live in a fallen world. We still live in a sinful world. And think, look, things are going to happen to us if we're, if we're not believers. And they're still going to happen if we are believers. That's right. It doesn't change. Just your source of power changes. Yes, that's good. Okay? If we, before you were a believer, it was a mess. Now we are new in Christ, but things don't stop happening around us because we are in him. Yes. We just have one to hold on to through the trials, yes. through the pain. Paul said this, he was beaten, he was shipwrecked, he was imprisoned, he was um, 
go through that. Hats off to you, Paul, because I do not want to go through something like that. But he held on. Yeah. He kept believing. It was a mess beforehand, and it's a mess still today. Yeah. Yeah. But you know what? Inside, yeah. we don't have to be a mess. Amen. That's right. We yeah. can be resting. Yeah. We can have peace still. We can have joy. We can have the river of life flowing out from us. There is something that we can hold on to, and his name is Jesus. Those who mourn, those who are in grief, sorrow, and regret, he says, I will give those. I will give those. I appoint to those. I give to those. Through the cross, through the blood, when we believe, you can receive, through the person of the Holy Spirit, what? Beauty for your ashes. And as I began to study this, ashes were a sign of repentance. Yes. I don't know about you, but through, through some of these trials that we've all been walking through, I have literally, I don't want to say, I did, never wanted to leave God or walk away from God, but I, I questioned why. Why are we, come on, don't have angel wings. Come on. <laughs> Why? What's going on? And a heaviness begins to set in. And then we begin to just sit down in self-pity. Yep. Yep. And stay there and wallow. Yes. Turn on Netflix. <laughs> eat a tub of ice cream. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Come on. Blame everybody else. Yes. Right, right. It's the job. It's the people I work with. It's the church. <laughs> Pastor Matt knows messages. <laughs> Naya knows songs. And we begin to look at everyone else and we begin to place blame on, on everyone else. But God says these ashes are a place of repentance. Every time I got my eyes off of the Lord and he would come and speak to me, and I set my eyes back on him. First of all, as soon as you repent, as soon as you change directions, as soon as you look back at him, as soon as you obey, okay, there's a peace that comes. I mean, you can literally feel it at times when you look back to the Lord. Wait, God, I trust you. Wait, God, I believe you. Lord, I, I, I am sorry. Forgive me. God, wash me. Help me, strengthen me, and we begin to just walk more towards him. Right. And those ashes, it says, be, they used it as a crown. It was called a nuptial crown. I was like, well, that's pretty cool. That's like a marriage, a nuptial. And what it was, was when we are one in Christ, when we accept the Lord, and we are now in Christ Jesus, we are one. We are married to Christ. We are one. Now he can take that which was ashes and rubble and stubble and a mess and make it beautiful through our union with Christ. And through our constant union yes. with Christ. Because you can be married to someone and be on the other side of the house. Right. And you on that side. God is saying through our constant relationship and constant union, I can take that which has been destroyed and in rubble and yes. in ashes yes. and I can make it beautiful. Hallelujah. Bring it to me. Yes. Come to me in relationship. Lay it down at my feet so I can change it. But that takes us taking our hands off and turning back to him yes. and getting up and walking with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Taking ashes. He said, I will give those that mourn joy. Joy. Joy is not happiness. That's right. I got a joy of the Lord down in my heart. It's not. Happiness is temporal. Joy is something God produces by his spirit. Yes. That no matter what we face and what we go through, there is a joy in our hearts 
God, I set my affections on things above and not on things yes. of this earth. Thank you, Lord. Because I am dead and hidden in Christ and God. I seek a heavenly country. Yeah. I seek a heavenly land. Yes. God, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth one day. And I'm going to take off this corruptible body and I'm going to put on incorruption. Right. Did you hear me? Yes. That body that we are in right now. But I go to the gym and squat and lift and try to keep it keep it uh, strong. Yes, this body, that body, we are going to take off the body and we are going to put on incorruption. Yes, I'm excited about that. Yes. I don't care if Jesus comes back right now. Yes. I'm ready. Yes. Are you ready? Yes. And if we're not ready, get ready. Yes. And bring everything. Yes. 
Though a deer panteth after water, so my soul longs after you. Yes, yes Lord. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for your kindness and your love and your freedom and your faithfulness. And I thank you, Lord, for life and life abundantly. Yes. She sat down. She's resting yes. from all her labor and all her toil and all her trial. And she sat down in Christ. She's in him. She's believing. Now, the other was reversion on the year of Jubilee. I'm going to give you back everything that was taken from you. When you begin to praise him, you begin to see what has been given to you. She put on the garment. She put on the garment. You can take the garment off. Yeah. Yeah. She had to come up and do something. That's what a relationship is. If we're in a relationship and we're not doing anything, then it's going to die. Yeah. And that's what happens with the Lord. When we don't come to him, he, he desires so much for us to love on him and yeah. praise him. Yeah. That's right. He doesn't force himself on us. So he's not, he's a gentleman, she said. He's not going to force himself. He wants you to come. You ever hug somebody to give some of the best hugs? And they just, they're just so sweet. Robert gives some of the best hugs. And Danielle gives some of the best hugs. You give great hugs. <laughs> but that's what that garment of praise does. It hugs us. It covers us, it clothes us, it reminds us, it, it sh shades us, shields us from the fiery darts of the enemy. Oh, okay, there's that, there's that bondage again. God, I thank you for freedom. There's that heaviness again. God, I thank you for joy. It shields you. The Lord had me read Psalms 91 right before we started. He is my shield. He is my covering. I want to encourage you to combat the enemy in the sphere of the power of praise. From now on. Yes. When people get on their nerves at the gas station, <laughs> in traffic, at Walmart, on the job, God, I thank you, Lord, that you have made me free. Yes. Amen. God, I thank you, Lord, for that brother or sister. Yes. Yes. God, I thank you, Lord, that you have given me power. Just begin to praise them and watch your attitude change. Thank you, Lord. Watch my attitude change. Yes. And watch God begin to move in our lives. Yes, Thank you, Jesus. How you doing, Mom? That's nice, right? <laughs> Comfy? <laughs> and then we will be trees planted, righteous trees planted, covered in the power of praise. Thank you, Lord. This, it says, you could stay there if you'd like. You're being a great mom. It says, it shall build old waste places. Real quick, Naya, if you would come up. And whoever else. Shall raise up former desolations and shall repair waste cities. Let me say this. If you feel like things have been empty, maybe even your relationship with the Lord has felt dry, we felt dry. Desolation and things that have taken place in the last two years can come to destroy. God said, I will build old waste places. I will raise up former desolations. Dad, you can take your spot if you want. But you're <laughs> And he says that it will be from generation to generation. And that's what I want to nail in real quick. What we do in this generation will affect the next generation. We are warriors of the kingdom of God. And if we don't rise up in the power of praise and allow God to produce in our lives what he wants to produce, the next generation will suffer. 
There is a war for our souls, for our family, for our friends, and for our children. And we, at, you, if you'll stand with me, stand on us. We have a part as children of God to play. And are we going to allow God to produce something in this year of freedom that he wants to produce?